you've got to, Mrs. Bedhouse. I've no idea. It's not like her to be late. Uh, Judy, uh, will you keep an eye on your form, please, with Miss Burton being away? They're getting rather out of hand, dear. See what I mean? Don't it's about Miss Burton. There's been an air crash. Miss Burton, you better tell Alderman State straight away. I'll do that. Uh, an air crash? Yes. Red Sally's been in a plane crash. An aeroplane crash? Did you He's been in a plane crash? Isn't that just like Sally? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, girls, your attention, please. Uh, I do not intend to make a long speech because today is a day of national celebration and uh, there are so many interesting events awaiting you elsewhere. Now, I've just been told that Miss Burton has been unavoidably delayed we were, of course, hoping that she would be here with us this afternoon to cut the first sod of the foundations of the new school building. I am going to call on Alderman Mrs. Beddoes to perform that function. Oh, I think this is Miss Burton now. South Riding. I thought of you all singing that strangely moving hymn, I Vow to Thee My Country. And then I remember the couplet that goes, the love that asks no questions, the love that stands the test, that lays upon the altar the dearest and the best. Now, don't take that literally. Don't let me catch any of you at any time loving anything without asking questions. Question everything, even what I'm saying now, perhaps particularly what I say. Question everyone in authority and make sure that you get sensible answers to your questions. And then if you do get sensible answers, obey the orders without complaint. Question your government's policy. Question the arms race. Question the Kingsport slums. Question the, the rule that makes women have to give up their jobs when they get married. We all have work to do. This is a great country and we are proud of it because there is so much in it that is lovable. But questioning does not mean the end of loving. And loving does not mean the abnegation of intelligence. Vow as much love to your country as you like. Serve to the death if necessary. But I implore you, do not forget to question. And now, on this Silver Jubilee Day, let me ask you to give three cheers for His Majesty King George V. Hip, hip! Hey! Hip, hip! Hey! Hip, hip! Hey! hip, hip!
No, no. I don't know about that, Mr. Sorton, she said, but I do remember I didn't want it to happen. I do distinctly remember that. Evening all. Oh, she's got some character to her, is that woman? Look what the cat's brought in. We thought we'd lost you for good. Hey, give us a fine and don't be cheeky. George, a quick one for Barney, George. How's married life then, Barney? Ah, oh, grand, don't like it. We thought we'd pop over and look at some old faces and clear the last of the stuff out of the coach. Hey, do you know what, so One of their books is disabled. Can I make speech, George? Oh, I must get that in. Excuse me, Barney. Give order now, lads. For five minutes, it's the king. Come on now, quiet down. Give order! Of this memorable day, I must speak to my people everywhere. Yet, how can I express what is in my heart? To the children, I would like to send a special message. Let me say this to each of them whom my words may reach. The king is speaking to you. I ask you to remember that in days to come, you will be the citizens of a great empire. As you grow up, always keep this thought before you. And when the time comes, be ready and proud to give to your country the service of your work, your mind, and your heart. A toast, lads. On your feet now. The king. The king. The king. My dear sir, no, I could not come and join in your jubilee ballyhoo. Except for unavoidable circumstances, I should have travelled to London for Sunday's demonstration against it. You are right about one thing. I haven't stuck this job for the two years I promised myself. I'm laid up again after a hemorrhage. But personally, I find I'm an extraordinary little. If I hadn't had a shot at it, I should have been eternally ashamed. I'm only sorry I stayed so long among the flesh pots of the South Riding. Except for one thing, at least I left there a better battlefield for so brave a fighter as yourself. Don't let bogeys spoil your work, Sarah. I have a feeling that even if another war should come and gas choke your girls and bombs shatter your classroom, something will have changed. Something have been made better by the good work you did there. That's as near to mysticism as I ever get, the belief that good work is never wasted. So, go in and win, my dear. Your friend and colleague, Joe Astle.
Thank you.